Virtualization is a thing of beauty. I've shown you how to run Windows on Windows with a Windows Sandbox. I've shown you how to run Windows 11 on Mac OS with VMware Fusion. And today we're going to talk about running Mac OS inside of Mac OS on your Mac, because why not? So let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm James, and today we are talking about virtualizing Mac OS inside of Mac OS on your Mac. I got a brand new Mac Mini M4 Pro, and I've been running Windows 11 inside of VMware, and I've did an entire setup video I put up over here, and an entire sort of walkthrough my developer setup. But I've recently been thinking about what other operating systems I can run. Of course, I could use Parallels or VMware to run Windows or Linux, but I was also thinking about how could I run Mac OS? And why would I want to do this, for example? Well, I'm often messing around with a lot of different pieces of software. I want to trial them out. I want to install bits and pieces uh, that maybe aren't production yet. I don't want to install them on my local machine. And that's where virtualization and virtual machines come in. It's why you can easily spin up brand new virtual machines or VMs of Windows or Linux or Mac OS. You can delete them, you can snapshot them, you can roll them back. It's a lot easier to experiment around inside of a VM instead of doing it on your local machine because you don't want to have to reformat your machine. So let's talk about some different pieces of software and how you can run Mac OS on Mac OS on your Mac. So let's do it. So we talked before about VMware and specifically Fusion uh, to run Windows on Mac, which I have a video on. It's also Parallels, of course, which many of you commented in, which is a great piece of software to run Mac, uh, Windows on Mac. And also, if you have the Pro version, you can run Linux and Mac OS as well. But of course, know that there's a standard and Pro and other editions, and they're paid there compared to VMware Fusion, uh, which is going to be a free uh, version you can get. I came across this Orca desktop from Mac Stadium, which I know for their cloud compute for Macs. Um, but I didn't really know much about it, but I did see that it was free to use and they say easy to learn and it's built by developers for developers. So I thought that was cool. You do need an Apple M1 or better with eight gigs of RAM and at least 50 gigs of space. Um, but what's nice is that they're kind of talking more about the development aspect of it, of creating these virtual environments that you can share with your team uh, that can be easily uh, also put onto different repositories too. You can download it from GitHub directly, which is kind of interesting as a way of downloading it. It's not necessarily on GitHub from what I could find here, just the releases are. Uh, so when you go over to the releases, you hit the DMG and download it. So that's pretty nice. And it seems like they're updating it pretty frequently as well, which is nice. Um, so it's pretty easy to get set up as you would expect. Just simply drag and drop that sweet, sweet icon over to applications. Uh, and then it should be in your applications under, where is it at? Uh, Orca. There we go. Yep. Orca desktop. And of course, you're just going to want to go ahead and open that up. Yes, Apple, it's okay. And I don't have any virtual machines, so it's asking me to migrate, uh, but it's good because this is the latest version, I guess. And here it's telling me that I have 64 gigs of uh, memory available. I don't know why it says one gig of available disk, but I swear I have two terabytes. And there's some default settings of where you want to store your, your logs and things like that. So let's create a new VM. I'm just going to do a clean install uh, over here. And we're just going to call it, I guess, new VM is good. Um, I guess the, the restore file, it's just going to create one for me. It'll automatically default to the correct CPU and memory it recommends. And here I'm going to say dynamic resolution, so I don't have a hard-coded one. Now this is going to set 50 gigabytes as the disk space. I'm going to tell you why that's important later. Uh, but once I hit download, it's not going to download the restore image from Apple that it needs to get everything set up. So I've super fast forward this in time. It doesn't take too long, but of course, based on your internet speed, it's going to take several minutes uh, there. This is also going to install the software at the same time. So we'll see installing now too, not only downloading, but installing Mac OS for us, which is pretty nice into the virtual machine. Okay, once it's up and running, uh, I can still adjust my CPU and memory if I want to. Uh, but of course, I can also just start the actual um, virtual machine uh, here. So I can hit from configuration or from here as well and just hit start. So let's go ahead and start this up. And this will be the first time that I'm running Mac OS. So imagine you just got a brand new machine and you can go ahead and run it, right? So it's going to boot it up completely. 
uh, and then it's going to run me through an installation process just like you may have seen before so here you can set this up you could even log in with your iCloud for example or just a local uh, user device whatever you want so here I'm just going to set it up and um, with just some default options and this is just sort of standard Mac installation so I'm going to speed this up here as well now I'm not going to go ahead and migrate it from another machine this is going to be a clean install so I'm just going to create a new user account and everything like that that you would expect and set a password so I'll speed this up quite a bit here and then pretty much at the end of the day you're just running a Mac OS update and setup like you normally would and then you're on your Mac. So there you go. You're, you're totally just on your Mac. <laughs> you know, it has everything as if you just set up your Mac for the first time. You can see I'm in windowed mode here and I have all my normal applications that come installed on Mac OS. If I go into the system settings and go into about, we can see I have seven gigs of RAM. I can see the specific serial number here of this machine. Uh, and I can see the virtual display, but then I can also see the hard drive here. If I resize this, we can see that now it's 24 inches virtual display. I can set standard resolutions, just like you would sort of expect uh, here, as if it was going on to different monitors. And you can go ahead and adjust that there. So beyond that, of course, we can come in back to Orca Desktop. We can pause it. We can stop the VM just like we would expect to do, right? So if I pause it, I go back over into the virtual machine. I can't click on it. It's just paused. It doesn't give you an indication besides in the title bar, but it's totally there. So that's kind of nice. If I unpause it, I can go in and now I'm going to go into shutdown, for example. And uh, for some reason, at least on my machine, it seems to say this failed to start VM, which kind of makes sense. I just shut it down, but it is shut down. I swear it's red there. And there's also this push to OCI uh, a location. So if you have this, one thing is being able to share your custom images. So obviously you can just share the image, but you can actually share the image in OCI compliant register. Here they're showing GitHub, for example. So if you want to share with your team or other people, if you set up your image uh, directly there. So that's kind of interesting uh, in general. So a few things that we can do in the configuration, like I said earlier, is we can adjust the name, the CPU. If we adjust it to higher than uh, half of the CPUs we have, it'll just be like, hey, it might slow it down. You can increase the memory of it. You cannot adjust the storage uh, of the disk, which seems important, but you can't. And we'll talk about that uh, a bit more. But here, you know, it's kind of a bummer. You could, of course, delete it. Um, here you could duplicate it. You could push to OCI registry uh, there. You can create a new VM. Uh, again, this is my, you might want to set it a much higher uh, gigabyte here. Uh, because you just get one hard drive and that's it. So it's kind of minimal configuration, to be honest with you. And the one thing to kind of note is that unlike VMware Fusion, when you're doing Windows on uh, Mac, that's going to allocate your hard drive on demand. So it'll increase the size on disk. For this on Mac in general, what I found is it always pre-allocates the entire disk image and the hard drive space. So I'm imagining here that has to do with the restriction of, 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 increasing the size of it at all uh, and that isn't created until you create the vm so you can see new vm and new vm1 and, and then their image is there which is really fascinating uh in general so uh, when you're done you can delete it and you can do any one or you can even pull from an oci registry if you want so you could be able to share these which is kind of cool uh, in general if you're coming from a, a development background so there you go that's how easy it is to get started with orca running mac os on mac os but it's not the only way to, of course, run virtual machines like Mac OS on your Mac. There are other pieces of software as well. Now, I did get a recommendation from all of you after some of the videos I did and some of the Merge Conflict episodes that Frank and I recorded, which was a piece of software called a UTM, which is available on the Mac desktop store and also for download via their website. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so I'm on mac.getutm.app, and this is to run yeah, Windows on Mac, but also you can run Linux, but also you can virtualize Mac OS as well, um, which is really nice uh, for ARM-based Macs. Uh, so you can download it or download it from the Mac App Store, and there actually is no difference. Uh, one is paid, one's not paid, so I guess that's the difference. I guess the auto-updating, but you can just download it directly as well. Uh, so you can just go ahead and hit the DMG, uh, down, drag and drop, and then it should be in your applications folder. Let's go ahead and pull the applications folder. If I can figure out how to use my Mac, there we go. Perfect. And that's going to be under UTM. Perfect. Okay. So 
uh, here we're just going to go ahead and open up UTM just like we did before. I actually really like this user interface a lot. It's nice here. We can see like kind of what's new and they're constantly improving uh, the support as well, which is really cool. So let's continue on. I like this user interface. You can create a new VM or see their gallery so you can see what everything is available, which is kind of cool. So all of these things can be pulled down and you have virtualized and emulated. So we would always want to use a virtualized because it's going to be a lot faster than something that's emulated. But I really like that there's a gallery here. You can select what you want to do, whether it's virtualized or emulated. And I love the little rabbit and the little tortoise. So we're just going to hit virtualize. And this is cool. Set up Mac OS, set up Windows, set up Linux. If you have your own ISO or I. PSW file or whatever it is, you can go ahead and grab that, else it will download it automatically for you. Here, you can go ahead and give it how many, how much memory you want, and of course, how many CPU cores. So I'll set seven, that's about 50%. And then the default disk size, so that's 64 gigs is the default. Okay, cool. So this is going to go ahead and now save, and we can see that it's going to start to download the Mac OS image from Apple, just like. Um, Orca did as well. So I'm going to speed this up uh, so you don't have to see it. So it's just going to download it pretty much. The difference here is that you can kind of easily manage the entire all bunch of different VMs here. So you could have a bunch of them if you wanted to, which is kind of nice. Uh, so, all right. So it's pretty much done. Now I did download it, but you still have to start it as well. We can see the, the, the RAM and things like that. Here it's going to say, would you like to install Mac OS, which we do. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now in the top bar, we can see that the installation's at zero. So we're going to start installing Mac OS. And again, the nice thing about Orca is all kind of done in one step, which I do like. Um, but this is nice if you needed to create a bunch of VMs and just kind of doing them on demand. You don't have to wait for it uh, in general. You kind of spin those all off. This did take a few minutes, as you can imagine, just uh, to not only download, but also to install. And then at that point, to be honest with you, you're just back at the normal Mac OS setup. So it's exactly the same setup that you just saw uh, with Orca as well. So you can decide how you want to install, what you want to create your names, all that stuff as well. So that's kind of nice uh, in general. So same old, same old, and we're good. Now we're back into our Mac as I like that. I do like that overall, there's a Chrome kind of around uh, this too. So we can see here on the about, uh, we can see all the details that we just saw. So we expect that. We've got the virtual display. Uh, you can imagine here that when you resize this, it's also going to resize just like we saw before. So if I go and like resize this a little bit, it does that little blur and it's going to resize it again, just like you'd imagine. So all the same stuff uh, as before. So that's cool. I do like these little little things. So you can go into to the Windows mode. You can go into like your uh drive image options, your USB devices, you can send different commands, you can capture input, you can pause directly from here. So that's really nice. You can resume uh, here. This restarts the VM This shuts down the VM. So there is some really nice control here on UTM. So it's pretty polished, I would say overall. Um, from this screen, uh, we can also go in and we can duplicate it. Uh, we can go ahead and move the selected VM. We can share the selected VM and share it as a UTM file. Uh, we can boot it up, of course. Now, but we can also go into the settings. So this is a pretty nice screen. I really like it. You can go into system you can change the boot, the virtualization on it, the different keyboards and pointers and clipboard sharing that you have shared folders uh, as well. Display. So you can automatically adjust that high DPI if you want network. So a lot more adjustments. This feels a lot more similar to VMware as well. Here you can see that this is the drive, the 64 gigs, but I can create another one. So if I wanted hundred gigs or another one, I could go and create that. So that's nice and you can make it removable or not too. So that's pretty cool. So that's really nice that you can easily extend it and get everything that you want. So I do like that. Now, just like we saw before, this is also pre-allocated. So this is gonna be almost a 70 gig um, uh, image on disk. So be aware that if you have space restrictions, you know, take that into consideration when you're uh, going and booting these up. So that is something to know about. But, you know, what's nice from this UTM space is that you can go ahead and get Windows or Windows 11 or whatever you want on it and fetch the latest Windows installer. You could go ahead and install different Linux distros and boot from different kernel images as well. There's also customization from like CD or floppy disks or things like that, which is cool. So you have all that available. Now, like I said, the only difference between Mac and downloading it directly, obviously, is you get the developer some cash, but also that it'll automatically be updated because it's on the App Store. Um, so there you go. It's completely open source too, which is a big 
awesome thing so you can contribute to it. Okay, there you have it. That is just some different pieces of software that I found just by browsing online and testing them out. But of course, there's all sorts of different virtualization software out there. Let me know what your favorite is in the comments below. For me, I was looking for something that is free just so I can play around with it, easy to set up and is optimized for my Mac, of course. So let me know what you're using. If you have any questions, leave them below on how your setup is going and sort of what your setup is. Uh, and of course, if you did like this video at all, love it if you give it a like, give it a little subscribe if you wanna see more developer videos here and machine setup videos as well. So until next time, I'm James, thanks for watching.